problem four years, three years ago. I says, and it, it worked, so I just wanted to try it, and it worked. She says, well, I can't give you those. What do you mean you can't give me these? She says, that's a drug that you can sell on the street. I said, I'm 70 years old. Do I look like a guy that's selling drugs on the street? <laughs> you know, come on, you know. So meanwhile, she says, but I got something else I'll give you. Uh, sertraline, I think she called it. All right, I may have written it down. I think it was sertraline. Sertraline, sertraline, something like that. Uh, 100 milligrams. I said, oh. she says, but it's going to take, you know, a week or two before it kicks in. I said, then how do I know if that's it or not? How do I know if that's the case or am I just sick? You know, you should have something you can give me to, to give me almost immediate relief to let me know what the problem is here. Yeah. Well, getting back to knowing your doctors, that's the problem we're going to have nowadays because we never see the same doctor. So the doctor's never going to get to know you. Do you understand where I'm going here? Because my doctors always knew me. I never had an issue. Now, I never did anything with drugs. But if I went in and said, I need this, they would have given it to me because they know me. You know, they know my demeanor. They know I'm not an abuser. I'm not a user. You know, uh, I'm not a habit-forming guy, you know. Uh, so, uh, but you don't get that nowadays with these, these new doctors that are coming in uh, or the ones that, you know, you can't get a family doctor anymore. Now, if I call the place that I went to, which is I've been going in that front door for the last 10, 12 years or better, uh, you know, I'm always going to get seen by either, I think they call them PAs or a doctor, but it's never going to be the same doctor, all right? Or it may be the same PA, you know, but is he going to remember? And he really has no say. He can't write a script really without the doctor approving it you know that type of thing so you know what's going on so i am going to start looking for a doctor now i was talking with bonnie my heart doctor and uh she had given me a woman's doctor's name uh, and i don't care if it's a woman or a guy um as long as they're a doctor that you know you can build a rapport with and uh this was six months ago, or maybe more, and I found that she's not taking any new patients. So I told Bonnie about that yesterday, and she goes, yeah, she says, it's only getting harder. She goes, there was another doctor in Brantford that retired, and now all his patients are looking for doctors, and nobody's taking new patients, you know, because everybody's at the limit. So meanwhile, I'm on a hunt for a new doctor, one that I feel that's going to be good, and one that's going to listen to me, because I know my body better than anybody else, you know, and uh, see what happens. So, what do you guys think? What kind, of, uh, what kind of medical things are you guys going through as far as doctors and, you know, finding good doctors and service and being seen, you know? I have no problem getting seen. Um, you know, I mean, I could, I could get, see a doctor in a day, uh, or not so much a doctor, but a PA, or depending on the doctor uh, and what he's involved in. But um, it, it seems like it's getting harder and harder out there uh, to find a good doctor like they used to have. I remember my doctor used to come to my house to see my kids. Now, I don't expect that anymore, you know, but, you know, that's the way it used to be. You know? So, I don't know. Maybe I should just start going to my vet. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, uh, I'm feeling a little bit better. I'm not feeling great. My leg is bothering me. The sciatic is driving me nuts. Uh, and I think that's because I broke the three toes. And when I broke the three toes, naturally, my leg got jammed. So, that acted up and screwed up my sciatica a little bit so but I go see my pain doctor pain management I go see him I believe Tuesday 
So uh, I'll talk to him about that, and uh, we'll take it one step at a time. So, all right, guys, I pace back and forth long enough. I talk long enough. I told you my life story. You know, I don't mind opening up here and there a little bit because if it helps somebody else, good for them. Uh, if not, if it's entertaining to you guys, well, good for you. You know, but uh, basically you're sitting here watching me pace back and forth in my shop. You know more about what I have in my shop than I do. I've got my coffee that I haven't finished. I got my pancakes that I haven't finished. Oh my goodness. And I got something I want to do on the internet. Not the internet, on the, uh, I got a sign I want to put up. And not so much put up. Here, I got it right here. This is the Second Amendment uh, of the Constitution uh, that's posted in Texas. Um, and I'm going to uh, try to make some type of a small but legible uh, sign. Uh, maybe double-sided, I don't know yet. You know, and as I go along, I'll figure out what I want to do with it, so. All right, guys. The wife went to the chiropractor. She feels good, so today is her last visit. And then she's going to go shopping. Now, I asked her to call me when she got out of the chiropractor. And she hadn't. And I know she's out. But she's got a lot on her mind. Oh, the post office. We had to send our paperwork in to Social Security. So the wife got all the copies that she needed. Hold on just a minute, guys. And uh, we did everything we had to do. And she says, I'm going to go to the post office and pay to have this mailed priority one day. Signed, requested, signature, whatever, whatever, uh, R, R, R. Uh, anyway, uh, so she did that, I believe, Friday of last week. Well, she's been checking the tracking on the post office, and it still hasn't been delivered. It keeps staying delayed. But wait a minute. We pay something like 14 bucks or so to get this delivered the next day because it's Social Security. And without that, we can't apply for this other program on our medical. So, what the hell's going on with this? Yeah. So, even the post office, you know, I don't know what's going on with this, this world. Uh, there ain't so much, I don't know, I know it's the country, we're just, we're getting, I don't know what we're getting. Can't blame it all on the foreigners, but yet we can. Um, I think if we threw all these illegals out, that there'd be more jobs for other people, and would incorporate the money back into our country, you know, instead of them sending it back to their country. I knew a person that came over here many years ago, legally, on a card. He came over here, uh, his wife, they had a couple kids, they opened up a business, and they worked here legally, and they were here legally, but it was temporary, it wasn't a, you know, a, you know, a full-time thing, you know, they weren't citizens, so... But what they would do is they were making money and they were sending the money back to India to pay to have their parents and their family members brought into the country illegally. Right? I thought, whoa, so now, well, you know, this is money that's being made here, like anything else, but it's being spent in other countries. So we're not keeping it within our system. Now, naturally, what went on with that was taken care of. But basically, if you make money here, legally or illegally, and you're sending it back for whatever reason you're sending it back for, 
you know, uh, even if it was legal to send it back, all right, you're still sending money out of the country. All right, we're we're helping other countries flourish while we're going in the hole. Now, there's nothing wrong with helping other countries, but you know, you always got to start at home. You know, if you haven't got a good foundation at the house, you know, don't be out there trying to spread it. You know. That's why we always did things by the book. You had to be sworn in legally. You had to do the testing. You know, you had to have the job. You had to be accounted for. You know, the, the country has to depend on X amount of people, you know, and, and not overpopulate. You know? Now, I know this is going to go against a lot of people, but you know what? I would say for the next year, no kids. And only for a year, not a lot. Because if you go too many, uh, what's going to happen is the generations, they won't have the overlap and we'll end up with problems and there won't be anybody here. Um, but the other thing I say is, if you're on any type of assistance as a career, meaning, you know, you're on it, your kids grow up and they're on it and they grow up and they're on it, you know what? If you're on assistance and it becomes permanent, you're going to be put on birth control because why should we have to keep paying for you to keep having kids and, and money they cost somebody here in Bridgeport about four or five years ago getting something like forty three thousand dollars a month going to the address and how they found out about it was the mailman they had a another mailman that was working the route or something and he was wondering why he was delivering, I forgot how many checks it was, 30 checks or something. He was delivering like 30 checks to this one address, which was a one family home with two bedrooms. Well, this person was living there, was living there under like 30 different names and collecting welfare on all the names. So what is going on there? You know? Now that's, that's shady. That tells me they must have knew somebody else and somebody inside the office knew something and that money was being divvied up. You know, that's what that tells me. So, anyway, because that's one hell of a loophole without knowing somebody. Yeah, that's like when I used to work for the bank or the FDIC and I was chasing down bank presidents. You know, you know the president, the next thing you know, he's giving you a $100,000 loan unsecured to a name that doesn't exist you know and then you give him you know seventy thousand and you keep thirty thousand we just made thirty thousand dollars for doing nothing you're not going to have to pay it back because the, you don't exist because you used a bogus name bogus social security number everything was bogus all right the president approved it you know because he was the only one that can approve loans that large so he's the only one that really seen it and then, you know, he knows X amount of dollars get written off every year, so it's not a big deal. So he picks up 70, you pick up 30, you know, and then you know a friend and, you, oh, you could do this. and Or you go in again under a different name, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, it just, you'd be surprised what goes on out there. So, uh, if I can remember half the stories in the order that that happened, I'd be happy to tell you, but sometimes I, you know, should happen some, so fast sometimes, if you're not paying attention to it at the time, you know, it, it's hard to put it back together, you, you know what I mean, so, alright guys, again, I'm done, I'm gonna have my coffee.